right, let's see how the 2.5 Iron Duke starts up. It's cold here. Wow, just fine. No issue. That was quick, it's been sitting here for a couple months. And there you have it, the dulcet tones of what is arguably the worst sounding GM engine that was ever produced. And here it is inside the engine compartment of my 1984 Oldsmobile Omega. And that is GM's 2.5 liter Iron Duke four cylinder. Now before all the Iron Duke lovers come out and say, why am I talking about this engine? It's the greatest thing ever. Yes, let me just say that this engine was indeed relatively reliable and pretty durable. It did, however, have a few faults aside from the noise, including a phenolic cam gear that meshed with the gear on the crank to move the valves, and that would tend to shear off teeth, and eventually the engine would just stop running. That typically happened around 120, 140,000 miles, something like that, but it could have happened earlier on some particular models. Aside from that, this Iron Duke was indeed a relatively reliable engine, although it was not a powerful engine. It was produced from 1977 when it was introduced in the Pontiac Astra, that wonderful vehicle that was Pontiac's version of the Chevrolet Vega. And it went on and continued in production through 1993. It's estimated that about 4 million of these Iron Duke four-cylinder engines were produced by General Motors during that time period, and they found their way into just about everything. From that Pontiac Astra to the X cars, the Chevrolet Citation, Pontiac Phoenix, Olds Omega, and Buick Skylark, to the subsequent N cars, the Buick Somerset, Pontiac Grand Am, and Olds Calais. They were in the S10 pickups as well, and even AMC bought them for a few years before they developed their own 2.5 liter four cylinder based off of their inline six cylinder design. And, of course, these Iron Dukes found their way into many different Grumman LLV mail trucks because those were based upon Chevrolet S10s. And you can still hear them puttering around today. Many of those LLVs are amazingly in service still, despite being 30-plus years old in many cases. So while I acknowledge that the Duke was indeed reliable... I must say that the engine is the crudest sounding General Motors engine I think that's ever produced. I don't know of any other engine that could go up against it in terms of overall harshness of sound, shall we say. GM did produce other four cylinders that weren't exactly sewing machines, like the 1.8 liter and 2 liter overhead valve four cylinder engines that were introduced in the J cars. But those were smaller displacement engines and as a result didn't have as much vibration and didn't sound quite as coarse as a 2.5 liter Iron Duke engine. As you heard, the 2.5 liter just starting it up in the parking lot is almost an embarrassing experience because of the noise the starter emits. And then once the engine lights off, it's still even more embarrassing because many of them sound like a diesel when in fact they're really gasoline powered cars. It's not quite clear to me what generates the noise on these Iron Dukes that causes them to sound like they're puttering along. I believe that it's that phenolic cam gear making noise, uh, particularly on Iron Dukes, I would say, from the 1985 model year through the 1987 model year. Those seem to be the noisiest. So if your Iron Duke sounds like it's a diesel... That's perfectly normal, and there's really nothing to repair or anything to worry about. It's just going to sound like that, and your friends are going to point and laugh at you when you pull up in one. And like I said, for whatever reason, outside of those years, this car is a 1984, and believe it or not, it's quieter than the Iron Dukes that I've owned from 1985 to 1987 model years. In the 1988, the engine did get a number of notable refinements including a balance shaft in the oil pan, which really did help smooth vibrations, but meant that as opposed to the typical spin-on oil filter, you had this funky cartridge-style filter that you had to replace, but that was worth it to get rid of those vibrations. And in 1987, the engine got a number of major updates, including a serpentine belt as well as crank-triggered ignition. 
However, the Iron Duke was never a high-tech engine, despite the fact that GM branded it as the Tech 4 in a number of vehicles, which car and driver infamously ridiculed it as being the low-tech 4, because there really wasn't much high-tech at that point associated with the engine, aside from the crank-triggered ignition. It had standard overhead valve configuration. It had throttle body injection. Perhaps that was an advancement over a carburetor. But it really didn't have anything fancy. And throughout its lifetime, it really just generated often between 85 and 90 horsepower. So it was not a high output four cylinder engine at all. Although I must say, in its latter years, there was a 110 horsepower variant. So that wasn't too bad for the era. And in the latter years, the engine also did get, in some configurations, a timing chain which was more durable than the phenolic cam gear that used to shred the teeth. So they did make improvements to it over time. Now, it is interesting to me that the Iron Duke has this distinctive puttering noise and is, as I mentioned, in my mind, the worst sounding engine that General Motors ever produced from startup to shutdown. It's also one of those cars where you turn the key off and the engine continues to run for a couple seconds almost and kind of as it spins down i haven't really experienced that in many other engines often when you turn the key off the engine stops instantaneously but not necessarily so with these iron dukes for whatever reason in any case when the engine was initially being developed the entire goal of the program was really to make a cost efficient vibration, I won't call it vibration-free, but minimal vibration engine. And in that regard, I don't think the GM engineers achieved their objective. They patterned this 2.5 liter Iron Duke engine off of a similar displacement 2.5 liter overhead valve engine that GM do Brazil was making down in South America that had a very short stroke of three inches, similar to the Iron Duke, and a larger bore of about four inches, just like the Iron Duke. Despite having similar bore and strokes between the Brazilian four-cylinder and the Iron Duke, they really didn't share any other components, but they were similar displacements. And GM believed that this short-stroke design on a large four-cylinder helped eliminate secondary imbalances and made the engine smoother. Perhaps it did, But it certainly didn't obviate the need for a balance shaft, which is what GM really thought. And it took from the engine's introduction in 1977 until the 1988 model year for General Motors to put a balance shaft in this engine. And maybe not coincidentally, 1988 is also the year that the 90-degree Buick V6, the 3.8-liter V6, got a balance shaft as well, which it probably should have had for some time. In any event, as I previously mentioned, the engine did prove to be reliable, but if it's one of those engines that's in your car and you're starting it up in a parking lot or at a friend's house or something, it does make somewhat embarrassing noises, particularly when it's under the hood or the trunk, rather, of a sporty car like a Pontiac Fiero. It just doesn't seem to fit the overall vehicle. That said, let me know if you think there's another engine that makes worse noises from the General Motors stable or other auto manufacturers and put it in the comments section. Thanks again for watching and until next time, take care.